I beat Genshin Impact with only Claymore characters, a challenge account inspired by Java and Dilo from their Swords Only and Bows Only playthrough. And after playing on this account for 222 days, I finally completed the game with only Claymore characters. Now, Genshin Impact will have updates which will add more content in the future. However, as of the recording of this video, we are currently in version 3.3 and I have gone through most of the content possible from this challenge account. As such, I'll be putting this account overview to showcase various things on this account, such as story progression, exploration progress, character builds, and so on. If you enjoyed this video, why not drop a like and a sub? Support to the channel is greatly appreciated. But otherwise. So right away, I'm just going to jump straight into the character selection screen. So the character archive, if you go here, there's a section that allows you to select only Claymores. And then as you can see, I have 9 out of 10 Claymore characters. The only one that I'm missing is Eula. No idea when Eula's banner is coming out. Hopefully it comes out in version 3.4. If not, please come soon. In the future, there will also be Dea. So Dea, she's confirmed to be holding a Claymore in the story. So hopefully she'll be coming out soon. I'll laugh if Eula and Dea comes out at the same time. And I'm just gonna look at myself in the mirror and just be like, Why do you do this, Hoyovers? <laughs> Like if you can ease into the content, so 3.4 Eula, 3.5 Dea, and then 3.6 maybe another Claymore character, 3.7 maybe another one! But only time will tell if that's actually going to happen, and uh, yeah, we'll just going to have to see. So as you can see, we've got the weapons here. Anything that's not Claymore, I just don't touch it. The bell as well, just not touching it, just completely useless. Uh, if you're running a support view, you always just go for the Favonius Great Sword or the Sack Great Sword, depending on the situation. But yeah, Favonius Great Sword is really good. And for anyone that's wondering, yes, I did buy the Battle Pass off recording. So basically, I had a video where I explored Enkanomiya, but the video fell apart because I was just mostly grinding through the chest. I didn't really talk too much in the video, so that video actually ended up being scrapped. And in that video, I bought the battle pass as well, so yeah. For artifacts, I'm not gonna go through it too much. I do have a backlog of artifacts here, which I can use for a strong box in a future video, but for now, we'll just leave it as it is. Now, for the character development item, we have quite a bit of a Hilitro mask and stuff. I will explain the Hilitro mask momentarily when we do the map showcase. Okay, so it has been a few days since I did this initial recording and it turns out I forgot Bruh. to mention about the Hilitro Mustang. So here we are. Ha ha ha. Anyway, so in Sumeru, there's going to be a few things called the Sumter Beast. Most of them, they're just normal ones. Some of them, they have like the Treasure Hilitro for two weeks. And then there's ones that are like from the Hilitro. So they are Hilitro Sumter Beast. And when you kill them, they drop a lot of the Hilitro Mask. <laughs> what is this? What the f I'm trying to show the. <laughs> So as you can see over here in the map, I've got these things that's marked on this monster looking icon. And these are the ones that I was able to find that are the Hilitro mask. This isn't an accurate representation of how many they are because some of them, there's like one, two, or even three of them. Like for example, I believe this circle over here has three of them and I've marked it as one. This is like two as well. So yeah, if you want, you can pause to have a look on the Sumter Beast locations. These are all Hilly Trolls and once you kill them, there's just a lot of Hilly Troll masks. And if you have any trouble on farming Hilly Troll masks, then well, you can use this as a quick guide, I suppose. Because I couldn't find a Sumter Beast guide for Hilly Troll mask online. So I had to make this myself. So yeah, hopefully this is of any help. With that being said, let's go back to the account showcase. For the character development item, we can just have a quick look over here. There's nothing too special. However, just a quick note, I do have Eula's stuff all farmed up already. So as you can see, we've got the character stuff. She uses resistance books. As you can see, I have 110 resistance books. <laughs> Not gonna run out of it anytime soon, if ever. And then I believe we've also got the weapon ready. So when that video comes, we can just farm for the weapon together. So Eula, please come out. I've been waiting for you for ages now, so I don't want to wait any longer. But on the topic of rolling for Eula, we do have 38k primal gems of this video and 17 million mora. We're not gonna run out of any resources anytime soon. I just want to make the thing a bit more smooth selling because you know when you're spending a lot of off time just doing random stuff, why not just farm for Eula while you're at it since Eula is the only character they were missing. Food wise, nothing else to say here. I'm not curious for not opening recipes. You guys keep roasting me in the comments but I just always return with a thumbs up. Yes, <laughs> just, just a thumbs up from me. And the materials, I was lucky enough to get one Claymore billet. I even tweeted it out. I was just like, wow, I'm so happy I got the Claymore billet. Now we could get both Eula and Deya's weapon. Obviously, I want to get more in the future, but we'll just have to see. Hopefully, I get lucky with the weekly bosses. But otherwise, pause if you want to have a look and let's move on. 
Gadget wise, it is what it is. There's not a lot to talk about here. Okay, so we have the NRE that's just there for the healing, really useful. And then we have the Windblast Harpestum. So anything that requires range, because you know, Claymore's only not a ranged weapon. Hopefully, in the future, we might see someone throw a Claymore as part of the skill. They'll be so funny. But yeah, until that happens, we're just going to have to rely on the Windblast Harpestum for the memes. And uh, yeah, there's the Serenity Teapot. I'll come back to it later on. And there is the Cascade of Tombs. I've actually recorded a little bit of a TCG gameplay for episode 37 of Claymore was only so stay tuned for that but otherwise yeah let's just move on to the next one quest wise yes we've got the aranyaka we got the scarlet sand slate and stuff not a lot i can say regarding to this but i'm just gonna leave it as it is because yeah, we just leave it as it is. Nothing else to say for the quest tab. Precious items wise. Oh, still haven't opened the uh, stuff. You know, I'll open it in a future video. And then we've got 20 fragile resin. This will be great for Eula if she's coming in 3.4. Otherwise, we can always just grind it out for 3.5. That's fine by me. And yes, as you can see over here, so many recipes that I just don't even bother opening. 45 star glitter. Hopefully, if we get like a constellation for someone else or just get another shock weapon. But yeah, future me will decide. And yeah, intertwine fades. A queen fades saved out quite a bit. I believe it's from the January and the December shop. Once I lost the 50 50, I think I just left it. There really isn't a reason for me to wish. I don't really want anyone. I don't even need the constellation for Sayu. It's fine. And yeah, level 10 statues. We'll go back to it later. And the Dendro sigils, we have a crap ton of it. I believe it's maxed at level 30. I'll need to have a look. You stupid. And uh, yeah, everything else is just there for the memes. And finally, finishing. Um, yeah, we don't even need to talk about the finishing. It's just finishing. It's nothing much else to say about it. As for the actual quest, the only quest that I'm unable to complete is the Aranyaka quest. Mainly due to the fact that I need Dendro to complete certain quests. That's the rings. Yeah, the Dendro rings. I can't do it. It's like, it's in the domain. I don't know a glitch where I can deal with the rings in the... By having a Danjo Claymore character will be really useful because there was some domains I was unable to complete and yeah, you just don't complete it. So the only problem that I have with the Archon Quest is the Archery Challenge. Everything else I was able to get it done. If I was forced to use a character, I just use the character. I don't really go too hard on it. Last time I did it, I spent 11 hours on what trying to kill doing? for Wolfhounds. I've decided, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that again. Big fat L, I had to take on that one, but hey, we went through it and yeah, we just move on. And the Story Quest, I've cleared everything. Not Thing was insanely difficult. What I believe I doing? recorded most of them. The newer ones in the Sumeru, a lot of it is just dialogue. So I just didn't bother record it because it's just literal dialogue. Commissions and road quests. And road quests, yeah. So back to the Aranyaka thing. Hangout events. No, I have not done them. The only one that I've done is No Wells. You're guaranteed going to be able to finish it because No Wells is a Claymore character. And at the time, I needed some stuff. I remember. Yeah. So you get like some books from these. So at the time, I needed some of it for Razor. And yeah, I just did them just so that I could get the book. Ever since then, I haven't really touched any of the other Hangout events. Now, aside from the quest, um, let's just quickly go to the Achievements tab. So we're currently AR56. So as of this video, we have 600 achievements. It's going to go to the chest count for each of the areas. So for Monstart, it's 51, 516, and 17. To my knowledge, I was able to get every single Monstar chest. I may have missed a few just because I missed a few. No real reason behind it. But for the most part, Claymore's only had no real issues doing Monstar. For Lee Rare, we have 81, 1414, and 46. To my knowledge, the only chests that I'm missing are the big pressure plate chest. Ushi was unable to activate the bigger pressure plates because you need like two summons or like the geo construct in order to activate it. And as of this video, we don't have any geo constructs that could press on the big buttons. So yeah, I did what I could and yeah, that's the results. In Azuma, we have 43, 21, 356. I believe again, still some that I have missed. I might have gotten every single chest here. If I don't, then well, I don't. The same goes to the Watasumi one, 19, 203, 28. There might be some that I missed due to various reasons, but I'm not going to go through in detail. But yeah, here's what I've got. And for Surumi Island, I have 6, 1, 6, 8, and 16. I think I missed one chest out of the entire island. I don't know where I missed it. I'm not going to look for it. <laughs> We're just going to leave it as it is. But yeah, for the most part, I was able to explore the entirety of Surumi Island. For Enkanomiya, we have 36, 1, 8, 3, and 17. Since I did Enkanomiya recently, I am pretty sure I know where I missed the two. First one, 
one is a time challenge. For some reason, if you go too far from the spot, you just instantly lose. And the second one is like this ranged thing that you need to use with an archer. Because the places are really far away. You had to hit it, but I can't hit it. It's just way too far. You need like an archer to do it. And since this was Claymore's only, obviously you can't do it. So yeah, those were the two chests that I missed. But otherwise, I'm pretty sure I've got everything else. So the Chasm one goes back to the same issue with Lyra. Some Joe construct stuff. Ushi doesn't last really long as a construct. So some chests that I just left out because, well, I can't really do it. But for the most part, I've done what I can for the Chasm as well. Sumeru is an interesting one because it's 53, 519, and 42. I believe I'm missing maybe upwards of 75 chests. It's like 572. I, is it 572? I think it is. A lot of it just comes down to Dendro Rings. There's just too many rings in the area and yeah, I can't hit the Dendro Rings. And I believe there might be some barrier stuff with the song. That one you need to do Aranara quest, which I'm currently stuck on because it goes back to the Dendro Rings issue. It's a bit of a big fat L that I have to take, but yeah. Nothing much I can do here. On the other hand, the Sumeru Desert, I've gotten pretty much every single chest. I'm missing one somewhere. I don't know where I'm missing that one chest and I'm not going to look for it. If I miss it, then I miss it. Not that big of a deal. And let's just have a look at the roadmap. As you can see, every single area is 100%. Even the exception of Old Wanawana. So that's the base over here. Because you need the Aranyaka progression. I was able to glitch into these teleport waypoints. However, the chest cannot be unlocked because it literally needs the quest to trigger. You like you need the quest progression in order to trigger some of the stuff here. And since they are not triggered, nothing much you can do at that part. But yeah, but aside from Ovan Aurora, I believe I cleared everything. So Leisha, Sea of Cloud, Be Rare, Dragon Spine, One Start. Even in Azuma, every single one of the islands have 100% expiration. So yeah, that's a really nice thing to have. We have full cleared everything. We might be off a few chests here and there, but it's not that big of a deal. However, with that being said, there are some domains I'm unable to do. So this one I was unable to do. This one I'm also unable to do. And this one down here, I'm also unable to do. All because you need to use Dendro to like do something. And I just don't have Dendro. The other one is probably just Dendro Rings. Yeah, Dendro Rings or just Dendro that I'm missing. But otherwise, we'll just move on. I believe, yeah, even the Desert one is able to do all of them. Because, yeah, the Desert one is just combat stuff. All right, I guess this one needs Dendro of some sort <laughs> as well. So, yeah, wow, this is so sad. Now, as for the statues, they are all level 10 with the exception of the Sumeru one. The Sumeru one is not level 10 because as of the release of this video, Sumeru is not fully out yet. However, I am speculating that our maximum is going to be a uh, level 9. Level 10 might be a little bit out of reach because I do have a Dendro Killers that is in old Wanarana, which I was unable to collect. The other one, I was able to glitch into it, but everything else, I was able to collect it. So Sumeru might be the first statue of the 7 that I'm going to be stuck at level 9. I mean, if we do miss out on the Shrine of Depths, that's not that big of a deal. Well, it's just a little note for this account since we're doing the account overview and all. Right now we move on to what I think is the most exciting part of the video, the character builds. This is what I have as of the recording of this video. So we're gonna start off with Razor, he's level 90. 78137, you can just pause if you want to have a look. We're running still 2 star silver, refine rank 1. Obviously this is the best sword for physical DPS Razor. And we've got 4 piece Gladiator. So we've got the Flower, we've got the Feather, Attack, Physical Damage, and Crit Rate. On station 6, and talent and 11, 12. I haven't done a triple crown razor as of this video because there really isn't a need to. Maximizing damage output at this stage isn't really helpful because the issue that I'm facing is a team comp issue. Not saying that I do not want to maximize Razor's damage, but I would prefer if I save that for a future video. But otherwise, this is a really solid free-to-play Razor build. I'm really happy to have my Razor the way it is today. Diluc is level 90. He's running your typical Diluc build. 80, 179. Pyro is a 61, 6. Pause you want to have a look. Running Black Cliffs Lecture with Farmer Rank 1. So this is a Claymore that you get from the shop using the Star Glitter. So a lot of people ask, Noblis, why do you not use your Star Glitter? This is the reason. If you get to the end game stage, your Star Glitter is going to be really valuable, especially if you are free to play. Save out the Star Glitter if you're not going for the Constellations and you might be able to get really good weapons such as the Black Cliffs Slasher. He's running 2-piece Crimson, 2-piece Gladiator. I'm not doing 4-piece Crimson because it's just a pain in the ass to farm for it. So Flower, Better, Attack, Pyro, and Crit Rate. The C0, Diluc, and Talent is Triple Eight. 
I still find it surprising that I have Diluc in the first place. Diluc is not a limited character banner, so he doesn't have a PD. So if you lose the 50-50, you can get like literally anything, and a small chance of it is being Diluc. And somehow, I got Diluc through the standard banner. So yeah, a massive W for Clay was only. Still can't believe I've got him. And yeah, let's move on to the next character. For Xin Yang, she's running a hybrid build. She's level 80. 2178, we're building on crit damage since she's a C2, which I'll explain in just a second. Running Sacrificial Great Sword, Refine Rank 1 to double down on the shield and getting the burst out a bit quicker as well. Artifacts, she's running 2 piece Noblesse and 2 piece Gladiator. Just Flower, Feather, Attack, Physical, and crit damage. Not the best pieces, but it still works. So I don't really bother about it. And Constellations, she is at C2. So if you check the C2, it just makes it so that her burst has 100% crit rate. So it just makes her a really good burst DPS dealer. And yeah, the extra shield is also really useful because if you pair Xinyang and Razor, it's more damage. Talent, we have two double eight. I invested on both the skill and the burst, even though the shield can be pretty weak. I mean, just having a weak shield is better than having no shield. That's, that's just what I'm trying to say here. And I'm pretty sure a uh, shield also increases physical damage bonus. Yeah, there we go. Characters shielded by Sweeping Fever deals more physical damage. So she pairs well with Razor. So yeah, if you can build Xinyang nicely, she does pretty well. She does pretty well. But otherwise, hybrid build Xinyang, that's what I have here. For Sayu, she's level 90. She's running an elemental mastery build. As you can see, it is almost 1000. It's not quite there yet. Whether if I'm gonna go for the four digit, it's up to me in the future to decide. You can just have a quick look at the details here, but nothing much I can say regarding to Sayu. She's running Rain Slasher, Reform Rank 1, level 90, just to max out the elemental mastery. She could do with the prototype arcade for the extra attack, but since we are running an EM build, we just stack EM, it's fine. You can also do like the energy recharge build as well. That does work however i don't really need sayu's healing as much i just need her to deal a lot of damage and going crazy on the em is a really cheap way to deal lots of damage artifact we have four piece river descent of course of course if you're doing animal build obviously it's going to be the river descent so we have the flower we have the feather we have elemental mastery Elemental Mastery and Elemental Mastery. I was really lucky when I was making the Sayu video. I got this really quickly. So I just ended the video so fast because I just got everything so quickly. She is Constellation Zero. I find it ridiculous how only females she is on C1. That is just straight up laughable, but I <laughs> have nothing else to say about it. Talent, we have two double eight. Nothing much to say about Sayu. She's just there as a secondary DPS character, while also doubling down as a healer. So great utility character. I'm happy to have her. Next, we have Beidou. She's level 80, 96 and 106. Yes, the crit rate is insane. You'll see in just a second. And yeah, Electro Damage Bonus. She's running the Serpent Spine. Only reason is for the crit rate. She could do with a prototype Archaic. However, since we have nine characters, eight of them goes to the Abyss, Beidou is actually the character that gets benched. I'm pretty sure the Serpent Spine would do better on another character, but since I just recently got a better pass weapon, I haven't really got a chance to do some experimentation. So be on the look out for future videos where I do some damage optimization with the Serpent Spine. Artifact wise, we have 4 piece emblem, because 4 piece emblem is always good on support characters. We have Flower, Feather, Energy Recharge, Electro, and Crit Rate could do with more grid damage but i haven't really been farming on the other artifacts so it is what it is she's running c1 beto so c1 we've got the shield which is nice i guess but beto isn't really centered around her shield it's more on her burst dps and talent we have six double eight Normally, I don't really touch the normal damage, but since Beidou is my second favorite character after Ember, yeah, there we go. <laughs> she gets a little bit of a special treatment over here, but hey, you know what? It's fine, it's fine. So Ito is level 90. So he's 80, 177, and ER is 142, and uh, we've got the Geo Damage Bonus Goblet on him. He's running the Red Home Stone Treasure Refine Rank 1. No idea how I got super lucky on the weapon banner, but hey, you know what? We take the Ws, so yeah, really nice. We have four piece husk, we have flower, feather, defense, geo, and crit rate. And yes, I was able to finally 
get decent pieces. So before I was like having some real rubbish substats on these pieces. And this one we have some crit rate. It's not the absolute best, but it was better than yeah, it was better than this. Like we needed the extra crit rate, so this addressed it a bit better. And just recently, literally today, before I record this video, I got this feather. Yo, look at that, twenty eight percent defense. Normally I would cry, but this time is a big W. This time is a pretty big W. As of today, the recording of this video, I have finished farming for Ito. I could continue to farm for it for like even better artifacts. But again, the issue with making the characters better is now an issue of Team Kong. It is no longer an issue with the characters. I could farm for like some obscure stuff, but I think I'm better off just farming for Eula. You know, Eula's gonna come back soon, right? So hopefully from tomorrow onwards, I could start farming for Eula. And then we will dedicate a video where we use Red Jump Resins to build Eula quicker. Constellation Zero. And talent is triple 10. Yeah, triple 10 Ito for that video. I'll just put it on screen right now. 200k damage. Holy crap. Still can't believe it, but it could definitely be better if it's not a claimers only challenge, but this is a claimers only challenge. You gotta stick by the rules. Chong Yun's level 80. He acts as a support for Ito uh, through the Noblest Oblige build, 61108. Chong Yun is running the Sacrificial Great Sword because I want his Q to be a bit more accessible. Sometimes being able to proc two of the E is actually pretty funny. It's also, it's really useful. So I, would ju I just want to keep that option open. Artifacts wise is four piece Noblest, mostly to buff Ito. I don't really need him to deal a lot of damage. The main damage dealer is Ito, and the Abyss Team Comp is designed so that Ito can deal lots of damage really quickly. So we have Flower, Feather, Attack, Pyro, and Crit Rate. Yes, the last two pieces are pretty abysmal, but I was thinking I was going to do an Artifact Strongbox video on Chong Yun and Beidou. Constellation is C2. The C1 isn't that big of a deal, it's just some extra Ice Blades. But the C2 makes it a lot better for Ito. So a lot of people wondering why I don't pair Chong Yun with Diluc. This is the reason. C2 Chong Yun decreases cooldown by 15%. And that 15% can allow Ito to shoot one more of the cow, the Ushi, during the burst, which will lead to more DPS output. And also quicker skill usage also means more energy for Ito. So it's like an exponential growth of damage if we put C2 Chong Yun on Ito. But otherwise, talent is 288. And yeah, that's really it for Chong Yun. Dory is level 80. She has some really abysmal builds. You could pause the one to have a look, but there's nothing much to look here. She's running for Volnia's Great Sword with Farmer Rank 1. Again, so that she could take the energy out for Ito. Artifacts wise is 4 piece exile. Since Chong Yun already has the 4 piece Noblesse, we don't want to double dip on the effect because it doesn't stack. So instead, we do this to address the issue of energy recharge for Ito. We have the Flower, Feather, HP, HP and crit rate. Crit rate because of the Fovonius Great Sword. And as you can see over here, I tried to prioritize the crit rate. The crit rate over here, crit rate over here, energy recharge is also really good as well, and crit rate energy recharge. So it's a pretty good exile build, but yeah, who knows, maybe in the future I could build something even better for Dory, but only time will tell. On stations, she's at C2. And talent is 268. You don't really upgrade anything else other than the Q, since the Q has the energy regeneration, which is helpful for Ito. But even if you leveled it up, so as you can see, if you level it up, it's just like a 0.1 energy regeneration. It's basically a negligible amount of energy regeneration, but it is better than nothing, I guess. So <laughs> it is what it is. And finally, we've got Noelle, level 80, 61, 107. I believe she's just there for the dual resonance. I don't really build her properly. She has the white blind, which is the basic weapon for all defense stuff. And the artifacts, we have four piece husk. So we got a flower, feather, energy recharge, defense, and crit rate. She's currently at C2, so we've got the C1 constant healing, which is really nice. And just some extra attack, which is practically, I guess, in a sense, useless, because you've got C6 over here that just increases everything by 50%. So a C6 Noel will definitely be up for some damage, but until that happens, she's just gonna be there as a support. And to back it all up, the talents are 2 double six. I don't really use her that much, so these talents are enough. So for the Spiral Abyss, I'm just going to go in real quick. I believe in this rotation, I've got 30 stars. So as you can see, yeah, 9, 9, 8, 4, so that's 30 stars. I don't really go for any higher. I just kind of run through the Abyss and yeah, that's about it really. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use the Team Comp and you guys can just have a look at how I do things. So here is the Team Comp. I just put Ito on a different spot because he needs the dual 4 piece bonus. Otherwise, it's a pretty straightforward team home. Ito, and then this one is just a Razor main DPS, and the deal is just kind of there for the memes. Okay. 
So yeah, that was me doing the Spiral Abyss. I know it's not really perfect, mainly due again, Ito's energy recharge is really inconsistent, which makes completing the Spiral Abyss with 36 stars a lot more difficult than anticipated. And then there's the second team comp with Razor and Diluc. Diluc just don't really fit in the team comp. We have Sayu that does the elemental stuff, but elemental and the physical DPS just don't work. It just doesn't really work, but we are making do with what we've got. Definitely 36 stars is still out of reach. Hopefully, we might have some OP Claymore characters, like someone that could ideally buff damage like a Claymore Bennett. But making that statement itself sounds like a complete joke. <laughs> I'm just laughing at this. It just makes no sense. But hey, you never know. Maybe Hoyoverse might check things up for the future versions. Hopefully, Fontaine, we might have a Hydro Bennett. <laughs> Hydro Claymore Bennett. Oh yeah, that'll be a first. If that ever comes into life, yeah, just remember that I made this video predicting this. So as you see here, my Serenity Pot is level 10. And I'm just gonna collect this for the memes. And this actually segues just nicely into this section over here. It's mainly just to get these bottles of artifacts and the transient resin. Obviously, extra resin is always good to work with. But the artifact, these essence over here, these are really, really good items to have for the end game. I already knew this from back when I first had the Serenity teapot. I just knew that this was going to be extremely helpful. And helpful it was. It's a little bit more of an extra grind in order to, you know, get the most out of this system. And this system definitely helps in the end game. But in terms of the actual teapot itself, I'm pretty sure I don't have much. So I just have two other layouts at 20,000. Just get it up to level 10 and then once that is sorted, you just meme. But yeah, just wanted to quickly talk about the Serenity teapot and how it's helping my endgame. So hopefully this shows how the account can progress quite a bit quicker because, you know, you have a lot of artifact bottles to work with, which is just 3 XP. While in the Serenity teapot, I just want to go into the wishing screen right now. It's going to go to the PD, so as you can see over here, I have 38k Primal Gems, 9 Fates just sitting there, of course. And I believe I've got 4 Fates here, but I'm not going to wish this video. This video is just me talking about the PD and the future plans for wishing. So as of this video, as you can see over here, we got Kerching, so we did lose the 50-50. So now, if Yula does come out, you're guaranteed to get her. I'm not going to build the 4-star PD for Sayu, because I just don't really bother about Sayu that much. So as you can see on screen, the permanent wish, I've already got d look and we are 50 in for the 5-star PD. So that means I'm not really looking for anything in particular for the 5-star PD. I guess the thing that I want is the Wolf's Gravestone, because that's the 5-star Claymore weapon. Any chance of us getting another 5 star claimer weapon i definitely want to get my hands on it but otherwise there is the four star battle pass claymore which i've already got i could just use that in the meantime so yeah we are pretty good in terms of our wishing standpoint we are not looking for that much and the stuff that we want i could definitely get it it's just a matter of me getting it early and if we save enough primal gems we could definitely have a shot at the weapon banner maybe who knows and of course, I'm just going to go to the shop real quick. So as you can see, this month we've got the Blackcliff Slasher. I'm not going to R5 the weapon. There really isn't a need for me to do it. But yeah, and of course, the Stardust Exchange. I've already exchanged one this month. We have plenty of time. I'm recording this at like early January. We have until the end of the month to get this. So yeah, we just take our time on this one. So yeah, that's basically my Claymore's only account in a nutshell. It's pretty much just like any other endgame account, except that we can only use Claymore's only. One heck of a journey. 
But yeah, here we go. Once again, we reach endgame on a different account. Definitely, there will be more Claymore's only content because, you know, I really want to get every single character and one day to the six starter abyss. Before, I didn't think this was possible at all. Maybe. Just maybe we might be able to hit it. So our quest to 36 star on Abyss shall continue. In the meantime, as new areas drop in, obviously I'll make more videos on it. If you enjoyed the video, why not consider dropping a like and a sub? Your support is greatly appreciated. But otherwise, thanks for watching and see you all next time.